Hi, we're here today at the Holtorf Medical Group with Dr. Holtorf to discuss hypothyroidism. Um, because September is Thyroid Awareness Month, we want to learn a little bit more about the condition. So, Dr. Holtorf, how common is hypothyroidism? Well, it's interesting that you know when you ask how common it is, one you have to look at in with particular illnesses. Okay. Now, most doctors believe, and most people believe that the most common type of disease causing hypothyroidism with low thyroid is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay. where the body attacks the thyroid. So it's an autoimmune disease. But actually, that pales in comparison to the most common type, but it's very hard to detect, is basically pituitary mm -hmm. um, and hypothalamic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So, which associated with any illness with inflammation, stress, dieting, overeating, mm -hmm. um, uh, basically uh, any autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, lupus, any, anything that has stress or depression as well. Wow. And so what happens is it, it feeds back, and I've written a number of review articles on this, mm -hmm. and shows that it is basically, let's say you take a diabetic person, mm -hmm. about 90% of those patients are low thyroid, but about 80% of those won't come up on a standard blood test. The doctor mm -hmm. won't you'll say you're normal. So what happens is they just keep gaining weight, more diabetes, gain more weight, and a vicious cycle. So it's the best way to stop that vicious cycle. Or even if you diet, mm -hmm. you know, a study show if you basically do yo-yo uh, dieting three times, your basically thyroid drops, and when you go back to normal eating, it doesn't go back. So people say, I've killed my metabolism, they have. Wow. And you did touch a little bit on the standard testing, and I believe TSH, or thyroid stimulated hormone, is the standard test, but you believe there's something wrong with that test, or just using that test oh, only? Oh, it's, it's theoretically fine for a person who is totally healthy, has never been overweight, has never dieted, has no stress in their life, has no pollutants. So it's an it's a idealistic person that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, so uh, thyroid stimulating hormone is produced in the brain, tells your thyroid to secrete T4. Then T4 needs to go to T3, so T4 is inactive. T3 goes in the cell, needs to be activated, um, and that's where it basically has it's like a gas pedal for metabolism. Mm -hmm. Under stress and a lot of conditions, inflammation, it can go to reverse T3, which is the same thing as T3, but backward. So okay. it goes receptor sticks there, nothing happens. So it's a thyroid blocker. So you need to look at free T3, reverse T3 ratios. You need to look at you know, free T4, free T3. And the TSH, again, most doctors will look at the TSH. You learn endocrinologists say thyroid's easy. Um, you know, if your TSH is high, your thyroid's low. Mm -hmm. TSH is low, your thyroid's high. If it's normal, it's normal. Mm -hmm. And that just misses 80% of people. Wow. Um, and the typical treatment is like a synthetic T4. Is there anything wrong with taking just that? And, and again, for... Someone who is totally healthy, has never dieted, no stress, mm -hmm. no depression, T4 may be okay. I mean, almost every person will feel better with a T4 or straight T3 um, product. And uh, typically, the sicker the person, the, the more straight T3 will help them. Because, again, so you get pituitary suppression, so low TSH, and then the T4... So you add T4, but then a normal person, healthy person, will convert it to active T3, mm -hmm. where anyone who's sick will go to reverse T3. So the way to bypass, if you give T4, you're just making more reverse T3. Mm -hmm. And people go, I didn't notice any difference. We see that over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Or also people who had a thyroidectomy, they take their thyroid out, mm -hmm. and um, they basically then give them T4. The average weight gain is 17 pounds. Wow. So how could that be normal replacement? Mm -hmm. Say, well, your labs are normal, just eat less. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, um, again, the sicker the person, the more you'll have that conversion problem. And I don't get too complicated, but there's a, a basically th active thyroid transport that it won't transport the um, uh, thyroid hormones into the cell with low energy. So, um, yeah, so T4, it, it, oh, there's, oh, you can always do better. Okay. What are some symptoms associated with hypothyroidism? So, the typical symptoms are fatigue. Cognitive dysfunction, cold hands, cold feet, cold intolerance. Uh, we joke and say, ask someone if they wear socks to bed, it's positive sock sign, which I've never seen it not be low thyroid if they have wear socks to bed. Um, uh, dry skin, basically um, depression is a huge one. Oh, okay. So the largest study ever done on antidepressants showed that T3 was a better antidepressant than antidepressants. 
Wow. And um, another study, again, bipolar patients, 135 patients with bipolar, total treatment resistant, tried on average 14 different medications, no response. Put them all on T3, again, regardless whether they were low or not, didn't mm -hmm. matter. 80% responded, 30% total resolution of symptoms. Wow, oh my goodness. I mean, it should be used so much more. It's safer and better, uh, a better form than T4. Again, we're missing the diagnosis and we're not doing a very good treatment. Okay, and you have a lot of this information on your nonprofit website, is that correct? Yeah, so if, if you go to the National Academy of Hypothyroidism, um, nahypothyroidism.org or Holtorf Medical Group, uh, you can find a lot more information there. Thank you so much, Dr. Holtorf.